water, you know, nutrient load to the South River and sediment loading to the South River. You know, it's South River, my understanding, is impaired for sediment and for E. coli. Um, it's a little harder. You talk to the folks at the state from the 319 program, like how do you dial in the, three, the E. coli part? Um, it's not super straightforward, but I think we can, you know, build a pretty, you know, robust grant application around controlling stormwater um, releases to the river, you know, by, you know, controlling, you know, all the runoff from the rivers in that neighborhood. Um, so we heard a lot of feedback from people about the Pine Hill and Upper Baptist Hill neighborhoods and all the flooding that happened in July. Everyone's basement was flooded. I know there were folks on Shelburne Falls Road here in town that their basements were flooded too. Um, so we kind of just wanted to elicit a response from folks and have a discussion about this idea for you know a stormwater management you know focused grant application um, as the three nineteen um, application for the town. You want to fill in anything? Um, sure, I'm Kimberly McPhee. I'm with the Franklin Regional Council of Governments and apologize for being late. And thank you, Nick, for um, kicking things off. Um, what I would add to what Nick described is um, a couple of things. One is um, the grant program that we had looked into uh, isn't requiring a match from the town, which is great. Um, also, my colleague Allison Gage from the POD was um, at a meeting today for another state grant program, um, the MVP program, which the town currently has funding from. And they made a couple of um, changes to their program. So there's no match from that grant required now as well as they set aside um, a specific pot of funding for communities that were affected by the storms in July and December. So the, so the good news is we've got um, two potential uh, grant sources. And so we'll need to kind of like talk amongst you know ourselves and see which makes the most sense to apply to. Um, in some ways, the MVP program might be a better fit because um, they're just focused on um, climate change, flood, flooding, flood resiliency, whereas, as Nick was saying, the 2019 program has a focus on water quality. So um, that's kind of, you know, some strategic uh, thinking and discussions that, that we'll be having um, over the coming days. Uh, the other important thing, um, if it wasn't already mentioned, uh, is that some of the solutions to the problems are going to um, be on private property, actually, right? So um, if that is the, if that's the case, anyone who's to um, have a discussion about what the stormwater treatment practices would look like and would be willing to have them on their property, that would be good to know as part of the grant application. So the state funding um, will, uh, can be used um, to do work on private property, but there needs to be, you know, this agreement um, in place. And I'm sure you all know that and you, and many of you probably have experienced, you know, this music stand, a localized um, problem in that in that neighborhood. So putting in like one or two solutions is probably not going to solve the problem. And I don't know, Nick, if you had talked about um, like oh, <laughs> um, uh, and Rosalie, oh Rosalie, yeah, Rosalie is here from. CA. Um, and so we can, if you want to, uh, Barney, talk a little bit about some of the um, like more technical sides of the, or more technical aspects of the work. 
Sure. Let me just do a quick check. Um, for those of you who are on Zoom, can you hear us any better than you were able to? It's better now. But people should still speak up, right? Yeah. Okay. As long as it's good. I know sometimes it's mean I'm here. Needs a real video. Oh. Hi, who is it? whoever's on the iPhone, can you just mute yourself, please? We'll Unless you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, that sounds great. Thank you. Hi. Don't, don't, no. Okay. <laughs> So I can, yeah. So um, what we had in mind, and this is uh, news that MVP is also an option without match. But what we had in mind, basically, for the grant was kind of a few different things. One thing is an engineering study of the existing stormwater in that neighborhood. So um, right now, with the MVP project that we're working on, we have a, a HECRAS model, which is a hydraulic model of the South River and like Pumpkin Hollow Brook and everything. Um, but what we would be proposing for this new project would be hydraulic modeling of the actual pipes. So it's a different program where you can look at, you know, flow through pipes and things like that. Um, and so there'd be some, you know, field mapping sort of like ground truthing of where is there a missing pipe i know we've had some reports that there's you know a lot of them have failed or we don't know where one side you know outlets but we know where the input is and things like that so that would all be part of it like a engineering study of the and rosalie who's our engineer would you like to add anything to that aspect of the did i do a good job of describing what that part of the uh, project would be um yeah i think uh, um you know we would definitely be looking to confirm what is actually out there now and then look at evaluating different options for improving the stormwater flow and then we could um identify different options and then also incorporate those into the modeling to see how they improve conditions there and I think an important thing to um, keep in mind too is that where we're looking at the whole, we would be looking at the whole drainage area. So those of you that have seen some of the reports, now what is it like 10, is it 10 plus acres or something like that? Um, right. It's a pretty big drainage area. So we'd be taking a look at that, um, you know, how the water is moving through that area then once it gets into where all the you know storm drains and pipes are where is it going um and how can it be managed in a better way to uh keep it from flooding homes keep it from you know flooding the road and you know eventually it ends up in the south in the south yeah, so that's kind of like the one main part of the uh, grant as we envision it. The second part would be, you know, maybe if we can get enough money to actually replace some of these municipal stormwater infrastructure, you know, um, and, you know, do any, you know, permitting that's required. One good thing about this is there, it shouldn't be a lot of permitting required as opposed to, you know, like the work we did on South River Meadow, um, which had quite a bit you know, a heavy lift in terms of permitting because you're working in the river. This is a different uh, sort of thing. So we kind of like that. Um, and then the third piece would be, you know, improvements on private property. And so uh, the city of East Hampton worked with uh, grant funding from MVP a few years ago, and they came up with this uh, homeowner's guide to like best management practices for stormwater on your parcel and it involves things like installing rain barrels, you know, installing infiltration trenches, uh, French drains, you know, uh, permeable pavements, uh, doing things like, you know, with retaining walls that have drainage in them and step features. Uh, Allison printed out some of that, which is up here on the table. Um, but the third part of what we're envisioning would basically be taking this East Hampton homeowner's guide, which is really thorough, um, and you know, kind of promoting that and helping people 
to look at their property and assess like what of these solutions might be a good option for me. And then we could actually have money in the grants to help offset the costs of implementing those. Um, so we're gonna work with people to kind of get a ballpark cost estimate if you want to put in an infiltration trench that's, you know, 80 feet long along the south side of your house, that might cost, you know, $1,500. There could be money in the grant to help pay for the expense of doing that. And uh, just kind of implementing those sort of, um, you know, control, you know, issues, you know, on people's properties. So people in the zone would have the opportunity to apply? Yes. Yeah, so what we are hoping in today's meeting is you know for you know people to sign up and you know we want a contact information and we we're talking about potentially getting letters of support or saying like I would be interested in having someone come out and tell me what could be done on my property or I would you know be interested in writing a lot of support saying we definitely need to fix all the culverts and you know bring to jump on this intersection or whatever you know so just like to help us kind of put the pieces together and make sure there's enough buy-in from folks in that neighborhood to, you know, that this is where we should go and not do something separate. Um, so just um, because we're recording this and people can watch it later, I just want to be clear that we're right now we're talking about Upper Baptist, um, parts of Pine Hill, Baptist Hill, River Street, you know, that's the area we're looking at. Um, also, maybe incorporating part of Shelburne Falls Road and Emerson Hollow. <clears throat> um, and that hopefully, if the town does get this grant, that we will then have resources at least to um, give out to everybody in Conway about how they can mitigate stormwater on their property. So it's not going to, this project would be focused on that area, but we try to be able to translate it as much as possible to the rest of the town. Um, Lori Block, what's the application deadline and the time of return, whether or not you have the grant accepted? So, so for the MVP program, which is the one that we may go for, the grant would be due at the end of April and work would likely be able to start in September. And we would probably frame it as a two year project. How soon do you and what about that other one? What about the GZA? The 319, yeah. Um, that RFR will probably come out in March as well, probably towards the middle or end of March, and the uh, application would be due probably in early June. But um, it can some the and then the funding would become available probably in. Um, like January, February 2025 once the contracts. I'm sorry, I forgot to say we would probably find out about the MVP grant in July. 24? Yes, it's July. It's they yeah, they turn it around to me. So if I read I have a couple other questions. I read the uh 319 grant prior to the meeting. And it really, stormwater is not its primary focus. It's really primarily focused on environmental uh, intervention, but the stormwater uh, runs off the ridge through beach fields and um, on the upper Baptist side, old barn agricultural heavily used small plot. Um, so, but there is a significant difference and I haven't read the other grant, I only read the GZA 319 one. And uh, there's also a standing water problem that for promotion of equine encephalitis or other mosquito-borne diseases is real. <laughs> um, um, so the MVP, the MVP program is a little bit more um, uh, flexible in terms of like the various uh, components that we could talk about in the narrative to kind of, you know, 
how uh, engage the proposal, you know, the proposal reviewers, um, because you could talk about health, potential public health impacts, water quality impacts, the flooding um, mitigation. We didn't, I mean, we are familiar with the MVP grant and, um, but when we were talking about this initially, we didn't think that that would be the way to go for a couple of reasons before Allison, you know, went to this informational meeting and all these new updates were um, announced. So we were really trying to um, find a grant program that we thought we had a good shot with and it was the, the 319 one. And, but, so now that we know that the MVP program has um, been tweaked a little bit, we will probably recommend uh, applying for funding from that program instead. So my question is, if we apply for the MVP grant, does that preclude us from applying for the 319 grant as well? Do we have to choose one or the other, or can we catch our bets? Um, I mean, you could, you could apply to both and, that just becomes like a capacity issue for the for COG and I'm I don't know about GZA and field geology services, but Allison and I have like a list of about 12 grant applications that we're working on for other communities as well. But I mean that is something that we could talk talk about doing um, because some of the information would be the same. I think that the 319, we have to craft the argument that it's related to water quality. Yeah, whereas right. MVP, it's a little bit more flexible. And now that they have that um, pot of funding specifically for communities that are impacted by the name, I would be shocked if Conway was not on the list. Do they or, both involve reimbursement of uh, costs for landowners? We could, we could um, uh, you know, propose the same projects to both funding agencies. So it could include modeling and you know field investigation, ground truthing of what's out there, assessment and prioritizing, you know, the municipal infrastructure that needs to be upgraded. So that's that will definitely be in either one. And then you know if people are supportive, the private land use, you know, BMP from the East Hampton guy could be included. Um, as well as you know, funding for upgrading of some of the municipal infrastructure. So it could be it would be basically the same project. It's just how Kimberly and Allison have to write, and how much they have to write in terms of trying to you know, get the money. Um, Danielle Thompson, I just wondering, is there a difference in the amount we can ask for depending on the grant? That's a great question. Um, both fund. Both grant programs um, have a lot of money this year, kind of more so than in previous years. However, I think the fact that they've set aside, what is it, seven million, seven, seven million. Um, for, for the in the MGP program yeah. for the communities hard hit by the inland flooding kind of gives yeah, you know, these commons chances there. And also that the town has had very successful um, MVP grants in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's also in, in the town's favor as well. In order to meet your deadline for your application, if you need documentation related to existing land surveys versus entirely fresh material, like one of the things I discovered in doing the research on our property um, is that your leach field plan, your property surveys, your MLS listing from the 70s and the 80s all provide pretty significant information about where uh, the, at least my home on Baptist Hill and its budding properties drainage really is including culverts and pipes where it exists. Um, I was surprised at the level of detail that was sometimes there. I have no idea if other people keep their documentation at this level, but I did call the Landscape School of Design because I figured that more than my property had been studied by it. 
and they said that I asked them, did they have archival maps of um, the town? Had they ever digitized them? Did they have them matching to the projects that were done? And in the very earliest periods, it's uneven. There's lost material in terms of preservation. Things got wet. Things were destroyed. But they have a surprisingly large volume of material about the town of Conway all over the town of Conway. And there are land ownership privacy issues, but there are ways um, that maps like that can be digitized in cooperative projects through state, other state agencies in the library system. But I would think that for long range studies, these are an invaluable source of information. We might, the project that I had um, that the previous owners did actually had the water flow rates out of the culverts onto our property as they existed in 1975. <laughs> I guarantee you those, they've changed. Um, the vegetation has changed, but I would think at the hydrology level, this stuff is pretty valuable. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think that we should include, you know, archival research as, as one of the you know action items in the grant application. So we wouldn't need any of that information up front. Um, but you know, we can write that, you know, that was brought up and that, you know, we would want to look for more of that and gather that and utilize that information. Um, does anyone else want to comment upon, you know, just the totality of this idea? Is this like, yay, or, well, you know, we'd rather see you do something else, or, you know, this, this is just in response to the comments we've had previously, like at the last open house in school and whatnot, that we decided to kind of go in this direction. Um, I'm Daniel from Stevens, I don't know if I'm just to, um, I think this is the only approach. I mean, it has to be done in total. I mean, this is this is a problem with spanning, you know, an entire neighborhood. Um, it's affecting people below us. Um, a lot of people have been impacted in these two big storms. Um, probably everybody here had butter in their basement at some point. Um, and I mean, our own personal situation that started more than a year ago. Um, before we would have that big storm. In January, we had flooding in our basement in December of 22. Um, so things have shifted, and we've seen a lot of changes just in our own yard. The backyard is saturated much of the year now. Um, so I, I, I think that, uh, and given the amount of water that's up on that ridge behind us, <laughs> It, it has to be tackled as a as a wide scale problem. You know, there are at least two fixes for this. That's a good, good point. I've been Emily. Um, we're like prepared for this to kind of uncover a very large project, like twenty million dollars, like really big. Um, just just to make that obvious. And yeah, it, it's, it has to be done. Like, but I mean, it really represents the scope of what actually might fit in the ground with the type of structure. And I do have a question. Uh, who will be doing the work uh, if you get successful grants and, and bid it out? Is that, is that like too high in the sky? No, no. Yeah. So um, I think so. Uh, Rosalie, who's on the Zoom, uh, is an engineer with GZA, and they're working with us currently. Um, I think GZA, their engineering and modeling um, staff would certainly be involved. Um, my expertise, I'm a river scientist, a fluvial geomorphologist, so I may be involved, but I feel like it may be to a lesser extent than I have been in past projects. I think uh, we're probably involved in administration and in charge of landowner outreach and uh, managing the grant. And we have Ron Sweet here, who's the highway super, who would obviously be yeah. you know, <laughs> highly involved, <laughs> completely involved in any of the yeah. public. Um, John Portis has his hand up. 
muted. I'm uh yeah, I'm happy to see everybody gathered together. Um I live on 67 Upper Baptist Hill. Um and my question is I was I was very impressed by the the FERCOG report that came out um at the end of September or early, I guess no, end of October maybe it was when we received it. And how will the how will the initial recommendations from that report sort of be furthered or studied? Um, how will some of the questions that were raised by that report be answered? That that's my main concern. Oh. <laughs> I don't have a great answer, but um, so what John is referring to uh, is a memo, uh, the field investigation I think was done in September by a couple of FERCOG staff, including uh, their GIS um, specialist, and there was a series of recommendations made. Um, I don't know if any of them were addressed when they dug up the pipe in your yard, Bill, but uh, I think this is, you know, a lot of field-based, you know, kind of trying to figure out what was out there. So that would be taken to the next level, including modeling. Yeah, it, so from a grant funder's perspective, like the town is already a couple steps um, ahead of the game because we're not going into the grant funder and saying, oh, we got this huge problem, you know, water everywhere, people getting flooded out. We're not starting from square one, right? We have the work that the COG did. We have the information that Lori compiled. We have Ron's, you know, knowledge of the of the town. So all of that goes into describing the problem and kind of framing the problem. So I would imagine that, um, and you know, Rosalie and Nick are very familiar with this memo. And I would imagine as we're scoping the project and thinking about the work that needs to be done, we would, you know, circle back to this information um, and you know, either have targeted areas that we look at or certain approaches, you know, that we explore. Um, but yeah, I uh while we can't um say that every single thing in this memo would be done because the hydraulic modeling and other field work might um prioritize things differently this is you know this information is a really good start and like nick mentioned earlier um any letters that we can get from you all and any of your neighbors documenting kind of what your problems are, um, if you are willing to consider having um, some of these stormwater management structures on your property. You don't have to like decide right now, but just be open to being part of the discussion in the project. All of that is really helpful for the grant application. Would it be helpful for those residents to describe um, their history prior to the storms and after. Mm -hmm. yep. Just wanted to add that for anybody who wants to write a letter. Yeah, because we have to remember um, people uh, at the state who are looking at this grant application might not even know where Conway is, right? So you have we have to tell the story that grabs the reader from the very beginning, like, and it helps them understand what the problem is what um, our approach is to like solving the problem, right? So that whole narrative needs to be very compelling. And the more that we can incorporate um, pictures and kind of testimonials from people, like the, the better that, that story is. To do that really effectively, it would be probably helpful to divide the 10 acres into quadrants so that you had some way to describe the land use history of the different sectors of it. Because again, depending on if you're going for a GZA grant or the, the MVB, 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 which, whichever, like there's different things you're going to emphasize out of that land use history. 
history, which is a different um, issue than, say, uh, the hydrology flow off the ridge itself. But for people to write targeted letters that read in a sequence that makes sense for a successful grant, that would be helpful. Well, uh, George Forster, a little back still. Um, I think I probably speak to a lot of people when I say that anything is a step in the right direction. It seems to make a lot of sense to start by getting state money to do engineering studies that identify the mechanics of the problem we understand um, and what potential solutions are. So I think this all makes sense. Um, makes a lot more sense than doing nothing because nothing means my front yard remains a moat, my backyard remains a floodplain. Um, and your leach field. Yeah, my, my leach field floods, uh, pollutes the flood zone. Um, so that's good. The question I have is it sounds like these grants are primarily um, planning and grants that study the problem and propose solutions. You know? Yeah. Um, that's part of it, but um, both grants provide funds for actual implementation. So the challenge that we'll have uh, for a two-year grant like MVP is um, doing the, the assessment and modeling and the identification of you know the size of the pipes where they need to go, you know all of those features, and then team that all up for. Uh, the construction season in the next in the next year. So it may be helpful, and we don't know this at right now, but it may be helpful to think about this in phases too. Like, you know, the first two years we get a certain amount of work done, but we still have a list, right, of projects that need to be done. So more funding can be applied for and, and the work continues. But the consultants will be able to, once they do their more in-depth analysis, be able to prioritize that for the town. You know, this these are the um, implementation projects that give you the most bang for your buck and here's why. And so, you know, then the town could decide, okay, these are the ones that work. To, to do first. But I, you know, I'm not super familiar with all of the problems that you've been experiencing. I mean, I read Ryan and Megan's um, memo, so it's just, you know, it's kind of mind boggling to think that all of this should be solved in two years, right? But we can we can make some really good progress for us. Um, Did you say where you want letters of support sent? Are we ready for them yet, or did do we want to send out a little, you know, um, kind of sample draft, or do we do you just want to do? Yeah, I think uh, straight if letters. If it's helpful, we can um, just provide a little bit of guidance about what would be good to include. Um, I would address the letters to. You know, the, to um, Barony, you know, the town of Conway, because they would be the, the applicant if we went with the MVP um, grant. And um, were you all on the email list from Barony? Because we could put together like a template with some information to them. Okay, we send it out that way. And we had to vote as a select board, right, to do this in the first place. I'm sorry. Do we had to vote as a select board to pursue yeah. this grant opportunity. Yeah. The other, the you know, I, I described it as kind of having three phases. Um, the one phase being work on private property, and why I thought that was important to include, even though you know rain barrels or an infiltration fence uh, trench isn't going to fix that whole neighborhood's problems. I thought that you know actually having money to do something, you know, to fix the, you know, your swamp of the backyard or whatever would be helpful 
you know, while people are waiting for, you know, the, the planning part, because I know that's frustrating and it's just like planning, planning, planning. So, uh, but yeah, both of these are implementation, like action grants. That's good. So, honestly, this grant would just be for them residents, that area, correct? You would not be doing it for the whole town, the other people that have issues. What we were envisioning was the for the modeling to be of that neighborhood and the you know assessment of all the stormwater infrastructure to be of that neighborhood. We guess we gotta kind of define what that neighborhood is, right? Where the boundaries of that are. Um the East Hampton, you know, homeowner's guide is gonna be, you know, sent out to everybody. Everyone can have someone come to the, you know, their area. But I, I think, you know, there'd be a limited pot of money for yes, I want, you know, funds to help offset that. And I think we'd probably prioritize people in that neighborhood. That seems reasonable to the folks in Conway. Um, and then, yeah, and then, and yeah, I mean, that's how we were seeing it. If that's on the one going in direction. And, a lot of other areas in town that could potentially become yeah. Major issues for the town of Conway if we're focusing on a specific area for uh, I'm, I don't know how to say this, but without offending people, but this town is a big town and there's other areas that have a lot of issues and if we're focusing on one particular area. I think that you know the other people in town should have some kind of resource that this area is being used. Well, and maybe one thing we could include um, in the grant application, in addition to kind of the outreach that Nick described, is um, gathering more information about where these other problem areas are in town and talking to people who are affected by it so that the town has that information available for future grant applications. That's all, um, you know, I, yeah. mean, I think it shouldn't just be that one neighborhood. I think it should be something eventually should be available to other people that have the same kind of issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we do have a lot of areas that are that way. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, we were just trying to think of something that was manageable in the time frame and with the like resources that we can ask for. And we're still working on the projects for Conway Center, so it's we're kind of on different tracks for different parts of town. And but I think that's a great point to make that note to everyone. And make sure that everyone's supported. One of the other things we kind of floated as an idea when it came to tailoring the East Hampton report to Conway is potentially identifying a piece of public property where we could do a demonstration project of say a rain garden or something that so that everybody in town could actually see how they're put together um, and be able to translate that information mm -hmm. to their own homes that they need to. Yeah, just a couple, just to for Ron's point, I, I agree that there are few sections in town that really could use a project like this besides Baptist Hill. There's no doubt about that. Um, they're also, um, it's, it's, it, but this is one of those things. It's like if all of your roads are all destroyed all at the same time, you can prioritize the repair based on what roads are most important, what roads have the most vehicle, et cetera. And so the, of our multiple disaster scenes in town, um, this was the one that affected the most residents and with the costliest disasters. So for that reason, it makes sense by anybody's metric of how to prioritize something like this to tackle this neighborhood first. Um, there are a second and third place, though, that are you know worthy of having their problems addressed, too. You're just doing this because it solves more problems for more people. 
we're bleeding everywhere. This is the largest wound in the tent. Exactly. Exactly. And a successful project like this might potentially set us up for future funding if we can show that like we got this grant and we, you know, managed to make an impact in this section of town, then maybe that's, you know, we're better positioned to apply for, you know, grants for other parts of town in the future. I would like to talk more about potentially going after both grants and how that could or could not work in our favor. But I think I know we're on a time limit as well. Here. Yeah. There's one way that you can build, in um, addition to your um, sort of mapping the East Champion Guide for a general group, if you build into the grant a coaching team for how to take, organize a neighborhood around a drainage solution problem so that you can bring lots of different resources quickly forward, that, that makes that Baptist Hill 10 acre region have a legacy that that fits other neighborhoods by by modeling how to turn it into a some kind of neighborhood action project. Yeah, it's a you know it's a great idea to think about um how if you did have one of these features installed on your property you know, would you be willing to let your neighbors or, you know, other residents kind of come take a look at it during a, a storm to see how it's functioning? Or do you build into the grant that that's part of the process of the grant such that it's not um, a volunteer, a yes or a no, but a part like that maybe it's not me, maybe it's or somebody else, maybe it's a coaching team that works for the duration of the grant to other sections of the town to share the knowledge. And then just one other thing, just to address Nick's comment about the, whether the FERCOT early September memo ever envisioned the, uh, the, the uh, swapping out or the, the fixing of the drain pipe that, that, that for many of you that don't know, there's a stream behind the homes on River Street from the post office to uh, behind between it, it goes underground between my home and the Sydney home. Um, and nobody ever knew where that pipe exactly went to. Um, and it turned it took the state engineers four days to find out that it had its own hand dug special channel all the way down to the basin right in front of the bridge over 116. At the end of the driveway, it made a left turn, then it made a right turn, and then another left turn. And it was a 150 year old porcelain pipe. It was impossible to ever, ever um, clean it out, remove silt from it, or anything. It, it's just so the which the three people working for Maximilian that were contracted day one, they said, forget this pipe, go new pipe, 70 yards straight to the basin and run. It took the engineers four days to catch up to the workers, yeah. but um, and that's exactly what they ended up doing. The, the wonderful thing is midnight last night, pouring down rain. Normally, I'd be sweating and terrified and going through my traumatic everything. Uh, and uh, but instead, the little stream is just a battling brook, just like it always is. And I could go to bed and worry it was real with them. So, so it takes an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but um, the, the the other thing about that is that the state replaced it, like the 12 inch porcelain pipe with a 12 inch modern pipe. They did write in their letter to us at the close of the project that their plans are to upgrade to a 20 inch pipe um, and then upgrade the basins along 116 carrying capacity because historically that their road and the reason the state did it is because when that stream overflows, it goes into the state's road and impacts the state's traffic, and that becomes their jurisdiction to fix. Um, and the but historically, where their road traffic is stopped is the low point right in front of the bridge over 116. So they want to they want to they want to be ready for future big storms, not just regular rainstorms. So their plan is to upgrade that. I don't think we we'll get to it. So we do need to be getting on. I know um, John has his hand raised. Can we say maybe that's the last question and then we'll. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I, did, I um, wanted to second the 
the thing that Phil was saying that uh, I think the idea of putting putting these little in, enticements into a grant for um, individual homeowner projects, um, I, I think that's a nicety, but I, I think that the scale of the problem was really clear that these pipes, that, you know, the currently existing pipes are just woefully inadequate given the nature of the storms that we're expecting in the future. And so it sounds like there's going to be a lot of infrastructure work that's going to have to be done and, and you know, increasing the size of these drainage pipes and everything. And um, so, I mean, I think that's where I'm feeling we need to focus, you know, because there's like some, like in the memo, there was like a, a very dramatic drawing of its 24 acre area that was all draining down onto Upper Baptist Hill Road. So, um, yeah, and it looks like the infrastructure is maybe over a hundred years old in some places. So, hopefully, we can we can address some of those issues. Maybe even use some of the funding that the the state gave us as well to get some of those projects done. Okay. Um, so, um, I guess we will put together something, a sample support letter, and I've been recording this, so I can send that out to everybody who is on the email list and anybody else who wants it who's seen this. And do you want to close the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for coming. Well, Erica called it to order because it's a select board meeting. So that's why I was looking at you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Move to adjourn. That's where everybody's waiting. So moved. Proper. Proper. <laughs>